The vast majority of defense and aerospace applications are characterized by the common need of distributing data. And this data typically needs to be distributed at different time and geographical scale. So if we consider exactly these two dimensions, which is the time and geographical scale, in this continuum we can identify several dis discrete points that will serve us as an example for understanding the kind of requirement that defense and aerospace application requires in terms of data distribution. So starting from the extreme left, we could consider radars. So in radars you have the radar processor, which is a number crunching application, which has to deal with a very high volume of data coming from the sensor, which has to be processed and distributed in real time uh, with very short timelines, typically on the order of uh, tens of microseconds and very firm deadlines. If we move next and we consider as another example uh, a electronic system or, or a lightweight reconfigurable vehicle, here we have a relatively small, um, at least in terms of geographical scale, distributed systems uh, with a very rich set of sensors which have to distribute their information to computing nodes as well as user consoles. If we move next to the right, then as an example, we could take combat management system. So in this case, we have a pretty sizable distributed system, both in terms of geographical scale, because if you think about the big boat, uh, that's several hundred of, of meters wide, and uh, as well as uh, from the, the challenges in terms of that several different time scale at which this system has to, to operate. In fact, here you have to distribute data, in some case, at a time scale that is on the order of tens or hundreds of microseconds, uh, and that is the case of the sensor to shooter loops, but in other cases, on the order of uh, several hundreds of microseconds or milliseconds, or perhaps tens of milliseconds. If we move yet to the next level, which is lens system, then in this case, things get even more interesting because in the same system, or overall system, we have to distribute data at several different time scale as well as several different geographical scale. And to make an example, you could consider data that is distributed uh, across soldiers or between soldiers that are on a field working on some specific rescue operation, or strategic information uh, that is setting the, the operation objective that needs to be distributed on a very wide geographical scale. So, Looking at this progression of application, um, they share the same abstract need, which is that of data distribution. And for each application, if you take them in isolation, they operate at different time scale, they have different inner and geographical scale, but uh, once you fix the time and geographical scale, they have again one common need, which is the fact that data has to be delivered on time, because most of this system, if the data doesn't arrive when needed, then it's worthless. Historically, these data distribution requirements were satisfied by proprietary technology that were solving one problem in a specific context. So it was, and it still is typical, unfortunately, to have a technology that was doing data distribution for the radar processor, another one that was addressing the data distribution need for the combat management system, and yet another one that was addressing the data distribution for the land system. Now, this was clearly creating uh, and it's still creating a technology management issue because from a CTO perspective, you're actually wasting R&D resources by reinventing the same technology and uh, you know, not making the effort to, uh, to, to, to devise something that is applicable in a wider sense. But even further, if we consider the trend toward network-centric system, we are creating a major hurdle with respect to interoperability. In fact, if each system is using a slightly different technology for addressing the same problem, then trying to implement the so-called global information grid will be a major headache because all systems will actually be distributing data with different technology. These technologies won't be interoperable and in order to achieve interoperability, we will have to address and solve an N-square problem, which is going to be very expensive as well as very tedious to solve. But you know, the, the most important part is that it's expensive. So, in order to address this challenge, uh, several years ago, we came up with OpenSplice DDS. And in fact, OpenSplice DDS was very successfully applied as a universal data bus. So, historically, OpenSplice DDS has been applied in radar processor, in uh, combat management system, air traffic control systems, and in a very wide set of defense application. And the vision, when we started working in OpenSplice DDS, was that of creating 
the information backbone or the information fabric that would interconnect all the devices that would produce or consume information in a defense and aerospace system. So this technology was so successful that eventually was taken as an example for defining the so-called object management group data distribution service for real-time system. And this standard, which heavily takes concept from OpenSpy CDS, and today OpenSpy CDS is of course compliant with this standard, uh, established really a, a leap forward in what is defined as topic-based publish subscribe middleware. The standard was carefully uh, specified to ensure that um, implementation of this, of this standard could be very high performance, very scalable, predictable and highly available. And this is clear why, because again, we needed to address and target this very wide set of application in defense and aerospace. At the same time, the standard had to be language independent, operating system independent, and hardware architecture independent, because in any realistic system, you have to deal uh, with heterogeneous uh, programming languages, operating systems, and so on. And more importantly, this standard was a fully standardized solution, meaning that we had an API standard that was uh, providing application portability, as well as a wire protocol interoperability standard, which was ensuring that different implementation of this technology could exchange data without uh, compromising performance determinism and so on. The OMG Data Distribution Service was adopted in 2004. And in four years, I think it has shown a track record adoption. So to begin with, the most prestigious administration worldwide have mandated or recommended this technology. So for instance, the US Navy has recommended the use of DDS as one of the key elements of the open architecture computing environment. DISA has recommended the use of DDS as the publish subscribe technology for distributing tactical information in all net-centric system. Eurocontrol has recently mandated the use of the data distribution service as the technology for exchanging flight data plan between air traffic control centers pan-European. And Kinetic has recommended the use of DDS as the technology implementing the information bus in next-generation Vetronic systems. In addition, some of the most important projects in their domain uh, had selected DDS and had adopted DDS even before the Associated Administration had recommended it. Examples are uh, the US FCS SOSCO, which is using DDS for a tactical data distribution, the European Next Generation Flight Data Processor, CoFlight, which is using DDS for distributing flight data plan both internally as well as between FTP, ZoomWalt, also known as DDG1000 or DDX, which is using the DDS within the combat management system, and VITID, which is using DDS as the key information backbone in the uh, Vetronics architecture. Yet another validation of the applicability of DDS in uh, addressing the data distribution requirement for defense and aerospace application came from a study performed by the Dahlgren's laboratory of the NSWC. In this study, they were comparing web services, Java, Real-Time Java, JMS, Corba, Real-Time Corba, the OMG Data Distribution Service and MPI, with respect to their ability to satisfy requirement of non-real-time, soft real-time, hard real-time, and extreme real-time application. And the OMG Data Distribution Service was the only technology able to satisfy the requirement for all of these application. We've seen how OpenSpy CDS and DDS as a standard satisfy the data distribution requirement for the widest set of application in defense and aerospace, thus providing the so-called universal data bus. If you want to learn more about OpenSpy CDS, its use cases, success stories, and so on, please visit one of our website where we will be able to find lots of white papers, recorded webcasts, YouTube videos, blog, and uh, technical specifications.